All right, he's Mega here. So here today, I'm going to show you how to remove and install an exhaust on the KLX 140, and more specifically the KLX 140L. So uh, yeah, because I'm installing a Pro Circuit T4 full exhaust on this bike, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. All right, so what you want to do first is uh, remove the side cover. This is where the exhaust is hiding. So I've already loosened it, but it's an 8 millimeter bolt here. Just take that out, and then there should be like a peg or something holding it in. Just pull on it gently, and it should pop right out. And then just slide it back. Boom. That's the peg right there. Just put that somewhere safe. Uh, yeah, so you don't lose the bolt. I would just put it back. Put it back where it was, right here. And then there, you got access to the exhaust. So next what you want to do is undo these bolts here. There's a bolt holding the muffler and the pipe mid pipe right here. So loosen these two, or take them both out. It looks like a 12 mil, and it is. There you go. Let's go ahead and loosen this one. And you want to go loosen the um, the one holding it to the the head pipe. All right. So just take those off, and then just go ahead, and, uh, and I'll show you what to do next. What you want to do next is so take the bolts off and the muffler will probably fall off if I do this but so I got one of the bolts off and this is the last part of this. Now you can just kind of just pull it off supposedly. Alright so yeah just kind of wiggle it out and it should just come right out. Like that. And there actually is a gasket in there. So there it is. There's the muffler. Let's put it somewhere safe. So, Alright, there it is. No muffler. what you want to do you got the muffler off so just go ahead and take the head pipe off now hopefully it will uh, come off nicely um, it's using a uh, another 12 millimeter not a 10 12 helps to have an extension these long T handles work great it may not come out so easily so if it's kind of stubborn, try to use some WD-40 or uh, or PB Blaster on it beforehand. All right, so the T-handle is a little too long for this. So. I use it to crack the nut, and I'm having no drama. Um, something bad was to happen. Uh, oh, yeah. So if something bad was to happen, uh, what would happen is. Uh, Something that would bad that could happen is uh, you break the stud off, or uh, or um, or uh, it breaks off inside the head, and you're gonna have a hell of a time getting it out. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so just take the bolt, just take the nuts out. Sorry, it's getting dark. I'm trying to hurry up here. So there. Just go and take the other one. See, it's already loose. Okay. So. 
and I kind of just ran it so it's kind of hot so you might want to wear some gloves um, I don't think you need to put the sh uh, actually uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, that this does have a heat shield on it for and I did already taken it out so you just go ahead and unbolt those two um, you don't have to, I don't think you have to take it out to take the, the exhaust system out though you just leave it on there so there it is it's out hooray that's what it looks like maybe you can do a little port and polish while you're uh, while you got open like that all right so that's how you uh, remove the, the stock exhaust system it is my go a better look at the the head. Um, yeah, so you just take the bolt, take the two nuts out, and it just comes right out easily. So you can tell I'm uh, kind of rich there. <laughs> it's all black. So hopefully, when I install this better flowing exhaust system, it uh, it leans it out a bit. Okay, so we got. Okay, it is a mega here. So uh, I already went and did an unboxing of everything you get with the Pro Circuit T4 exhaust for the Kawasaki KLX uh, 140. Um, so uh, so this is just it again right here, and uh, I'm gonna go open this guy up and we'll go see what's in here, and then uh, I will go install the head pipe and the muffler. All right, so like I said, I'm kind of excited uh, for this muffler because uh, I've never bought a brand new. Uh, name brand muffler before you know and uh like i said i went with the pro circuit because i got the best deal on it and it was a full exhaust system so just cut this out here okay so looks like it comes with a bolt a nice 10.9 grade metric bolt um pro circuit sticker Oh, two Pro Circuit stickers. Oh, misleading. It looks like there's only one in there. <laughs> and uh, a tube of some, it looks like, like some anti seize compound, yes. It looks like it is, uh, hmm, I don't know. It's from for, for exhaust. I guess I will use that. All right, so here, here's a little, uh, a little instructions here, or a letter. Let's go take a look at this get started so these are like the manuals so pro circuit they're based in corona california look at that so dear customer thank you for purchasing the pro circuit exhaust system for your klx your kawasaki klx on for the pro circuit exhaust comes with a removable and replaceable usfs approved screen spark arrester huh. well i wish they had stamped it somewhere saying that it was a usfs approved but if you do, if you look inside the muffler, um, you can see a screen in there. See, so I mean, it de it definitely has the spark arrestor in there. I'm um, I'm assuming if you probably take the cap off of this and take the spark arrestor out, um, it may say USF as approved somewhere. But I'm not gonna take it off. <laughs> so um, also available from Pro Circuit is a quiet core insert that can be that can reduce the noise level of your motorcycle and different size end tips will change the power delivery of the motorcycle. Remove the three bolts with the end cap to change these accessories. To order these accessories, contact your pro. Okay, that's nice. They're advertising the rest of their products. All right, directions. So uh, I'll just go over these directions real quick and then we'll go uh, install it. The directions, you will need an eight millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket and wrench and a small screwdriver. Move your side plate. So uh, I already went over um, taking the exhaust off, but uh, we'll go through it again. Remove your side plate. Remove the stock exhaust system and heat shield. Save the stock bolts and nuts. Okay. Now put your head pipe on with the stock nuts finger tight. Apply the Pro Circuit anti seize pipe, um, anti seize to the head pipe and silencer joints. Put your silencer on with the bolt supply finger tight. Now you can tighten all nuts and bolts in your exhaust system to the specified torque in your owner's manual. Ah, come on! You can't just give us some some torque specs uh, pro circuit. <laughs> Starting with your head pipe first and your silencer. Okay, so you work from the from the head on out. Gotcha. And then replace your side panel, and you're ready to ride. So pretty simple. You probably if you probably wouldn't need a manual either. I mean, it's pretty much the same as removing it. So it's very simple. Um, 
they make no mention of the bolt here. Yeah, there's no mention of the bolt. Maybe I... It's because it says to save your old bolts. Um, put your silencer on with the bolt supply. Okay. So... So, I don't know. It doesn't say which one. I don't know if it's this one. Because it fits in here. Or if it's the one that goes on this one. But, uh... We'll use it for something, because <laughs> this is the silencer section. It says to use the supplied bolt, but like, which one? Um, I guess we'll find out when we install it. All right, let's go do it. Okay, so here's our head pipe. You want to go get that into position here? Just get it in there as good as you can. Uh, oh, also, uh, there's a there is a donut in there. Uh, you may want to inspect that. Let's get it to focus. There you go. So you see here, there's like a donut. It looks like there's a donut, but just make sure it's not damaged or anything. It looks it looks fine to me. Um, boy, there's a lot of carbon in there. I kind of want to clean that out too. Um, so yeah. So first thing you want to do is put the anti-seize compound in. Uh, since uh, I don't want to crack open a new packet here, and I got like a big tub of anti-seize I'm gonna go ahead and use this this is just a regular aluminum uh, I don't have the copper stuff um, right now but um, this will work it says it's good up to 1600 degrees I think it should be okay but if you didn't have any anti-seize with you then that's what you would use Let's just go ahead and uh, apply some anti-seize to the threads here Spark plug is in the way. Just trying to get some on the end too, just to keep that from rusting, you know. Okay. The thread should be clean because you just took the bolts out. Alright, so uh, what you might want to do if your combustion chamber looks uh, pretty black like mine, you know, it looks like I'm running rich or something, um, you, uh, you might want to clean up. The, uh, at least the, the outlet here with like a bore brush because I, I can't find anything else to fit in there um, you could probably get a Dremel bit with a uh, with little brush in it and it'll it'll be easier but let's go get a, a bore brush this is a bore brush from a M16 actually this is the star chamber brush from an M16 and it seems to be doing the job just fine it's I just don't want to get it too dirty but just go ahead and uh, Go ahead and clean the outlet here. So, because that way it won't, this carbon won't restrict the output, you know? So, clean as best you could. You can probably, you can probably spray some carb clean. I, I wouldn't. So, just go ahead and do that. And then, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow it out with the with the air gun. You can use like a can of uh, compressed air will work. I, I don't want to. I don't want to spray anything in there because I don't want to damage the um, the valve stem seals. Okay. All right. So here I got my compressed air tank, and I'm gonna go shoot some air in there. Uh, make sure you wear. Uh, I, I'm not wearing any eye protection, but I suggest you wear eye protection or just don't look at it directly when you do this. Look at that. So you just kind of want to keep on doing that. Just, uh, just kind of alternate between uh, cleaning it and uh, blowing the, the carbon out. Just to make sure you get it all, so let's go ahead and do that.
Hey, look at that. I can kind of see in there now. It's nice. All right, so that should be good. I can probably stick my finger in there now. All right, there we go. I can already tell you, if you wanted to do like a little porn and polish, you probably could now. It's a little bit rough in there. Um, that's not ideal for an exhaust, but uh, that's okay. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> So I don't, unless I don't want to get any metal shavings in there. This combustion chamber is tiny in this thing. All right, so go ahead and uh, put your uh, your head pipe on. So it says go ahead and put the head pipe on, and uh, I got my uh, old nuts right here. Boy, I kind of want to clean the rust off of them first too. All right, so I went ahead and used a, a wire wheel and a drill to uh, clean my nuts here. Cause they were like, haha, that sounds funny. I cleaned my nuts here. I took all the, the corrosion and stuff off of it. Um, I just don't like the way it looks like, all yucky like that. All right, so go ahead and put your head pipe on. It's pretty easy. Just go ahead and line up the hole and then line up the flange to where the studs are. Just push it in. Uh, okay, also you want to make sure that uh, that the outlet is, is routed towards under, underneath the frame. Okay, so that's pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and put the nuts back on. Put the nut back on. So let's get the no man's on the front door and deliver me a package. so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So it said to just do everything finger tight first. After you, and just remember to put the anti-seize compound on there. All right, so, so there it is. Boy, it, it comes, it comes really close to the, um, well, that's why you just put it finger tight, so you can still move the pipe around. So you should be able to move the pipe around like that, you know, still. Alright. So now, what you want to do, is go ahead and take your muffler. Okay, now you just want to get your, uh, get your bolts ready. I'm not really sure which one is which. Um, they are the same size. <laughs> I don't know. And then you have this one that's longer. I think the longer one goes on the can. We'll find out. So, just for good measure, I probably just want to put some anti-seize compound on these. Uh, I know we're going to reuse one of these, so I'm going to go ahead and goop that up. Uh, I'll use the new bolt. Alright, so. Here's the muffler. We'll just go ahead and slip the muffler in there the way the old one was. Sort of, kind of. Tricky. It's a really tight, really made to be a precision fit. So, so just kind of, um, just kind of um, get it in there and work it, work it in, and then just line, until you line up the bolts. Sorry, airplane's passing by, but go ahead and take your long bolt. Oh, okay. Now I know why you need a long bolt. This flange is much the. the I mean, the hanger here is much thicker than the than the Kawasaki one. So go ahead and put that in. It doesn't mention anything about washers or anything. It's it's a flange nut, so it, uh, it's a flange bolt, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so there it is. Just put it in there. Remember, everything finger tight first. Finger tight. You want to make sure everything fits proper first. And then line up this bottom hole here. I'll show you. So yeah, so if you can still you can still kind of slide the muffler around. See, see it still moves a little bit. So you're gonna want to pull that out enough where you can line up. See, see where the hole lines up. And then just go ahead and put that in. Thread it in. A little, 
I'm having a little difficulty threading it in. So uh, if it if you're threading it in and it's not wanting to go in, just make sure you play with it a little. So so it can. You don't want to cross thread it. Is, is what I'm trying to get at here. So there you go. So now it threads in nice and smoothly. All right. So just finger tight, and then you probably just want to probably just want to go wiggle everything. Just wiggle, wiggle everything. Just wiggle everything so everything is in place properly. And then just go ahead and start tightening them all, a little bit at a time. Including the head pipe. The pipe looks tight already. Maybe the head pipe is too tight. It, and then uh, just go ahead and torque it. Okay, so one thing just to make sure everything is all good. Um, so when I started tightening these, this one became too tight. So um, just go ahead and loosen it a little bit. Loosen it with the wrench. Okay, so now it's loose. So it kind of moves around more. Everything is nice and loose, but it's in place. So, like the manual said, okay, so, so it says to work from the head head on, on out. So you want to start here. So I saw that was still, it was still, uh, it, it got tighter, so maybe I tightened it too much by hand. So just go ahead and loosen these a little bit. Okay, kind of give it, give it a good little wiggle. Okay, um, and then go ahead and start tightening, tightening the um, tightening the head bolts first by finger. Okay, just try to get it as tight as you can by hand. Okay, it looks about as tight as I can make it. And then and just start working your way out. So use the the middle bolt, tighten that one by hand, then tighten the the muffler one. Okay. So, and then now we go torque it. Also, okay, I wanted to point out that uh, the um, the thicker, the bigger bolt goes with the um, with the goes on the the muffler hanger because it's thicker. See how much thicker it is? It's a good. Oof, it's probably probably three or four, t maybe three or four times thicker. So, see how much. How thick that is compared to this. So that's why they give you the bigger bolt. And it's no big deal. It's a, it's a little bit too long. <laughs> it sticks out the other end. That's okay. It's not touching anything. So um, so there you go. All right, so it's on there. It's on there, finger tight. So now we're gonna go torque it. Okay, so Hades Omega here. I. Uh, so now all that's left is uh, we gotta go torque the bolts. So uh, so here are um, here's the diagram with the exhaust and everything. Um, the nuts that are going to the head are number two exhaust pipe holder bolts are 11 foot pounds, not a lot, uh, and then. Bolt five, the one that holds it to the frame, is 19 foot pounds. What about the one in the middle? Bolt A. Let's see. Yeah, so we're looking for A here, but uh, I'm assuming it's probably the same. It's probably the same. It's 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 the same size bolt, so it's probably 19. So it's 19 for the um, the the muffler bolts and then the head pipe is like 10 or 11 so so there you go we'll get our uh, torque wrench out all right so i got my torque wrench set at about 100 ish foot pounds it's about 10 i an inch pounds that's about 10 uh 10 10 foot pounds um so i'm just gonna go ahead and do one so remember we're working from uh the head 
on back. So we want to start at the at the head first. So just start tightening these one at a time. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get to. Yeah, you definitely need an extension for this. And the extension may uh, mess up the torque settings too. nothing touching it looks like the clutch line is fine it's nice and tight here so now just go ahead and uh, tighten the rest of the bolts so all right so working on our way back so we do 19 probably like 20 foot-pounds of work so let's go ahead and tighten this one it's not very tight at all Man, that bolt sticks out a lot on the back there. Okay, let's do double check this one here. All right, there we go. It's done. Uh, so now, uh, now what you probably want to do—I uh, mean, it's optional. You, you might as well put it back on. Um, is the um, heat shield here? You don't burn your leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. All right. Well, there it is. So uh, uh, I'm not gonna go into detail, too much detail into how to put it on. You just put it back on. Um, just uh, what I I put a, a little bit of anti seize on it on the end of the bolt, and then I just uh, and I just made sure it was assembled correctly. Um, there is a little grommet that goes in here, a rubber grommet that uh, keeps it. You know, it, it lets it like flex a little bit and um, and mine was kind of messed up but I just made sure to, um, it's easier to put thread the bolt through it first and then like kind of just put it on and just kind of align it well there it is um, and there's two little washers behind it too so that's why I say thread the bolt in there first because a uh, little you pain in the ass to sandwich all that stuff in there uh, yeah and then just uh, go ahead and take your allen wrench and then just snug it, I don't want it too tight there you go. It's on there. It looks good. It looks great. So uh, now go. Now what you got to do is uh, go ahead and put back your uh, side cover. All right. So yeah. So just uh, put your side cover back on. I left the bolt in here so I wouldn't lose it. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. There it is. Okay. So just go ahead and. Uh, so the way this goes on is it kind of have to slide it up under this this black cover here that goes on the tank right there and just kind of tuck it up into the seat and then there should be like a back here is a, a little peg that goes in there <laughs> it's not the most secure of uh, side panels just go ahead and put it back in piece of cake so there it is it's all done uh, you can't really tell it's there or I guess you can kind of see it poking out there um, so there's the gap it's very close but not really it is however touching right here um, it's probably gonna just melt that this uh yeah so it wasn't made quite properly um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure you can't adjust it either. <laughs> it's just, ah, it's okay. So it's it's so what it's gonna wind up doing is it's gonna burn through this a little bit. Um, if you wanted, you can go get a Dremel and you can slot it here until it doesn't touch anymore. Or you can get a, or you can get something to insulate it like a piece of silicone, which I may actually do. Um, and then what you want to like, do is uh, check the fitment here. To make sure the wheel won't hit it when it compresses and it, it looks pretty good um one way to do that is to just 
just get like a, something straight and let's put it up and straight up and down right there see so it comes close but it's not gonna hit that it'll hit the fender so there it is pro circuit exhaust so let's go fire it up kind of excited to hear what it's gonna sound like Uh, so this is a cold start though, so it, I hate to say it, it sounds almost the same. Just make sure the fuel is on. And there it is. Oh, it's a it's a lot bassier now. It sounds very similar to the stock is Oxford, it's it's more bassier. It's got more bass to it. Alright, well there it goes. I hope I hope that helped uh, people out on how to install this. If you don't know, it's pretty simple, but uh that's how it's done. Okay, he's gonna make out. Alright, I also want to note that uh, it's pretty close to the rear fender. Like, look at how close that is. Yeah, it's almost, almost touching. Wowie. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a real tight fit. Um, I wish it fit a little bit more, better like the, like the stock muffler. So there's actually a, um, like a donut here for it to press on the muffler. The old muffler, the stock muffler, but it doesn't have it anymore, so. It's kind of just resting on this now, which does not have any kind of insulation on it, which I don't like. Um, yeah, so that's another fitment issue I've noticed. Other than that, it looks like it's it's great, man. The, it's not touching anything. The heat shield fits on there perfectly. Good to go. All right, so that's just something I wanted to note. It may be different for your bike. And not all bikes are made the same, right? Okay, I'm also, uh, um, there's another issue that I'm thinking of is uh, the, uh, the stock muffler had a clamp on it and it clamped where the, bi the pipes go together. See right here? Um, this one just slips right on. So I'm assuming there's no gasket, nothing. It just, just sticks right in there. Uh, so I imagine it, I don't know, it might leak if there's a lot of back pressure, but uh, there probably isn't that much back pressure, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, but I don't see any reason to use a clamp there because there's no uh, there's no cutouts inside the pipe to, to make it squeeze, you know? So And there's like no kind of coupler or anything, so... I'm assuming that's the way it is because it, it doesn't, um, doesn't mention anything about the clamp. See, it just says use the stock, save the bolt, stock bolts, and then you just tighten them. Put your silencer on with the bolt supply finger tight. Now you can tighten all nuts and bolts on your exhaust specified torque. Start with the head pipe first, then your silencer. Yeah, it doesn't mention anything about that, so I'm assuming that's the way it was designed. You just slip it on. You don't have to clamp it together. Um, and I could see how that is because uh, it has less back pressure towards the, the um, muffler portion. So. I don't know. I guess that's just the way it is. Um, uh, if anybody, uh, uh, please let me know if that's a normal thing for for uh, aftermarket exhaust. He's a mega out.